Are we live? Fuck it, we'll do it live. What up guys, welcome to another AMA. Going to be yapping for 10 minutes about what's going on in my life, the company, all that, and then getting into your questions. That's the new format. Um, shit, what's going on lately? We're launching a lot of good products. Lychee and Peach are getting manufactured right now. I was just watching them on the production line. This is, this is going, and I'm so stoked to launch them. Um, I can't wait. We restocked this beef tallow chapstick, and I use it all the time. Mm -mm -mm. And yeah, that's been flying. And we have some more beef tallow products that are going to launch in April and May. So one thing I'm trying to do is launch this like honey beef tallow beeswax product as a daily face moisturizer. It smells amazing. And the texture is just great. Honey is antimicrobial, antibacterial, but you only want to use a tiny little amount of honey with your beef tallow moisturizer because you don't want it to have like a weird texture. So this one's like perfect. Absolutely amazing really good for your skin health. Super excited to launch that. And the lychee and peach electrolytes, everybody's been waiting on them for a while, I know. Um, strawberry whey protein just launched. There's actual real dehydrated strawberries in there. And it's just one of the best tasting ones we've ever had out there for real. Uh, the tubs away are moving fast. Mint chip, butter pecan, honey salted caramel. There's not that many left of those. So if you want to get, if you want to get one of the tubs, go on our website, use the code healthy if you're getting them. And yeah, that's what, what's been going on product wise. I'm trying to work on some uh, pet products, you know, like some beef liver dog treats, stuff like that. We just got to find a good source, you know, because I need it to be grass fed, grass finished. I don't want any BS uh, for the dog. So I've been getting into that. And from like a business point of view, there are more pets in the United States than children. So I'm like, well, we should probably like have something that people can buy for their pets. But most people run like these kind of scam pet things where they're like, They'll sell you beef liver dog treats like at Target. We were looking at some, and it's like $19, $20 for like a little tiny thing. So I'm like, how about, what if I could find one where I get like a lot of higher quality, first of all, grass fed, grass finished beef, freeze dried liver treats, and get it to like 15 for like a big bag? You know, I think people would be stoked on that, but let me know below. Let me know if you have dogs too. Like, do you have a dog? Um, I did the podcast with Cookie King. That was amazing. He genuinely wanted me to edit some stuff out and he wasn't sure if he wanted to go out, all this stuff, but we did end up releasing it and it's gotten a lot of good response. If you haven't watched that, go for it. You know, and if you don't know who Cookie King is, like, you know, if, if you want to see inside the mind of a Gen Z YouTuber, content creator and some stuff that maybe they're going through, I think his story is pretty synonymous with a lot of Gen Z kids right now, just like where they're at. So um, maybe not all, let me know if you're different below, but I think he can dial in his health. I have high hopes for him. And I'm just trying to get him to know that like how important health is, how important gratitude is, and how important realizing how lucky you are is. I think it's really important if you're watching this, you're watching it on an iPhone, you're watching it on a computer. You really have to start to think about how lucky you are in the grand scheme of things and have that in the back of your head. It's not to say you can't focus on your own problems and be like, damn, like I got to improve this, improve this. But if you're doing it from a place of like hate or a place of like you think your life's not good, it's just going to be less successful, man. You have to realize how lucky you are to have, you know, an iPhone and a computer if you're watching this and then move from there. So, yeah. Um, what we have accomplished this month is we have finally secured the San Diego house studio. So we have a house now in San Diego, well, in April, and we're going to build out a studio there. Why I'm doing that is so we can, one, get a better kitchen. I recorded this kitchen right here, but it's just not the best kitchen for recording. Most people don't care because they just want to see like me do like beautiful, like high protein recipes that are easy to make. But I have so many other recipes I want to just do. And like, we need a better kitchen, you know, just a better kitchen to film. in. so that house definitely has that. Um, it's a hitter of a house, dude. I'm so stoked. I think there's ocean views from it. Like we're seriously on. Let's go. But the main thing is building out the studio. I want to build this podcast to the next level. And I want to start to have like a really good studio where I can have people in, multiple people and do a more professional style podcast and get some really good guests on. So let me know who you'd want to see on. I was just talking to my videographer. I'm like, dude, I want to get like Cheeto Vera on, the UFC fighter. I think he would come on. I have, I have some good connections out there. So I want to get people that are health experts in different subjects in and really get you guys um, just perspectives from all type of people on health, on life, all that type of stuff. Um, obviously, my buddy Austin lives down there, Organic Tarzan, a.k.a. Austin the Marine is what we call him. And so he'll be like on the podcast all the time. I think he's just great. And I'm stoked to spend more time with him down there. And I want to do more meetups down there, more stuff like that. San Diego lifestyle is just very, very good. Uh, so I'll be back and forth from Santa Cruz and San Diego, but I can't wait. Let me know if you're in San Diego below or what you want me to do down there, but I can't wait for that. So 
it's a lot, man, because I got to buy a house down there also. We got the business house, like a rental house, but I have to buy a house with my fiance. Um, you know, we're going to uh, buy a house down there and just kind of start the thing. Like, she wants to be in a house for a, a few years uh, before we uh, have a kid. Around the Bay Area, we have, like, all these, like, properties, like, one here, one here, but nothing's really solid. Um, so, like, we are going to get something more stable down there so I can have kids, man, and start that life, man. I'm stoked for that, so... It's gonna be crazy, but you know, it's, it's time. I think it's time, man. I want to have like nine kids. No, I'm kidding, but a few, a few kids. So I'm stoked for that. Um, what else is going on? Yeah. Just doing the damn thing. Uh, lifting weights a good amount. I've been pretty consistent with my weightlifting and jujitsu lately. So I have jujitsu practice tomorrow and yeah, I mean, how I split that up is there's not like an exact set schedule every week, but I hit legs and then I go to jiu-jitsu and then I, the next day, like I'll hit, you know, back and tries or something and I won't go to jiu-jitsu. I'll do some other, you know, form of cardio. And then the next day after that, maybe I'll hit chest and buys, no jiu-jitsu that day. And then the day after that, maybe I'll just go to jiu-jitsu. So no lifting, just jiu-jitsu. So I kind of like switch it up. So I'm not like overloading my body and the lifts also help your jiu-jitsu. The jiu-jitsu helps your overall physique because you get good cardio in from that. And then I'm surfing when I can. Uh, but I think I'll be surfing more in San Diego because it's just like better and easier to go surf up there, honestly. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You guys have left your questions below. Let's dive into this week's AMA. First question, what do we have? Brendan, can you talk about stevia and monk fruit? Why those sweeteners and not other ones? So those aren't the only sweeteners that I'm a fan of. I definitely like honey and maple syrup in moderate to small amounts. I think those are great sweeteners. I'm not a big fan of the artificial sweeteners. If you like those and they're helping you lose weight, go for it. I'm not really a fan of what they do to uh, your gut and animal models right now. So I'd like to see more evidence on those. Stevia is a small plant that grows in the ground. It's about this big. It's a green plant. You can take the leaves right off of the plant, chew them, and the alkaloids in there are sweet, okay? So when you don't like use a massive amount of it, it appears to be beneficial for your gut health, for your oral microbiome, and that is why we use stevia leaf. I do have some concerns if people are using massive amounts of concentrated stevia that doesn't really seem natural to me, right? This is a plant that grows in the earth. Obviously, it's on this earth for a reason maybe, and you can take a small amount of that, put it in your mouth, and it gives a sweet flavor. We don't use that much stevia in our products. We don't use heavily concentrated stevia. That's why you'll see stevia leaf on our products. Uh, monk fruit is another sweetener that, in my opinion, is totally fine in small amounts, and that is another one that we use. Uh, I don't want to use aspartame. I don't want to use acylfame potassium. I uh, definitely don't want to use sucralose. Sucralose is probably the one out of the artificial sweeteners that is pretty bad. Uh, there's some studies showing that it can also raise your, basically your blood sugar. Your uh, So why? Why would I use sucralose in my products? Stevie and monk fruit. Um, honey, I think is totally valid. Maple syrup, I think is totally valid. But those are sort of what I use as sweeteners. Brendan, does it matter what time I take magnesium glycinate? So magnesium is now the supplement that is in a lot of sleep products, right? You see these magnesium sleep, magnesium, you know, for, for sleep. Magnesium really just helps all aspects of your body in so many different ways. So it helps activate over 300 enzymatic processes in your body, in your brain. So in my opinion, and from, I mean, you can tell me if you feel this, when I take magnesium, I don't get sleepy necessarily. Yes, it can help your sleep much like sunlight in the morning can help your sleep. Sunlight in the morning isn't going to make you sleepy. Is it going to benefit your sleep later? Yes. So you can take magnesium any time of the day. I do prefer to take my big dose of magnesium in the evening, but that's just because that's when I remember to take my magnesium. Uh, sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll take it in the morning. Our electrolytes have a small amount of magnesium, but just the amount that you would lose when you're sweating. So it's not a big amount of magnesium. Moral of the story, take your magnesium whenever you want. Brennan, I have those red rashes around my mouth and I went to the doctor, they prescribed him some wild stuff. Is there anything he can do for those red rashes? So here's what I would do if I had those red rashes. Let me address this question like this. So I'm not giving you, you know, do whatever you want, okay? Here's what I would do if I were you. So I would start taking about two grams of lysine at night. Lysine can help with a lot of those like cracked things around your lips and a lot of that redness around there. So definitely be adding in lysine. You may be having some type of autoimmune issue, which is very common with the skin around the lips. So I would definitely do sort of like an elimination diet and just eat like more of an animal-based style diet, cutting out a lot of those grains for like at least like 30 days. It's not a big deal. Just cut them out for 30 days. 
okay? Um, what I would also do is get a good honey and beef tallow moisturizer or just beef tallow and start to use that. And I would not be using those crazy products or steroid creams or whatever you're being given. Me personally, if this was me, I would not use those. Um, so definitely do that. And yeah, that, I mean, if you try that out, let me know, but that's what I would do. And I think that would definitely help it. Brendan, what can you do to recover cardio wise after getting sick? So yeah, getting sick can really kind of diminish your cardio temporarily. Uh, weeks and weeks ago when I did an AMA, I was like, I got sick. So I was sick for a few days. I obviously did not go train jujitsu or, you know, do any hard cardio during that time. I did a lift in my backyard, like not that hard, but you know, um, you feel it, you feel it. even just like lifting a lift that wouldn't even like stimulate my cardiovascular system, you know, at all. Like you were kind of like, oh, I'm breathing hard, you know? So yeah, um, what I would definitely do supplement wise is take some quercetin and N-acetylcysteine just to help your uh, lung function, liver function, all that type of stuff. Uh, to build your cardio back up, what I would do is start with some long walks, maybe even on the treadmill uphill, like 30 minutes, you know, maybe like an 8.0 uphill on the treadmill at like a 2.8 to 3.0 speed. Start to do some of that where it's actually not that difficult. There's never a part where you're like really like gasping for air, but it really does start to get the blood flowing. You want to sort of ease back into that cardio. Um, and then at some point, once you've done some of that easing back in, you will need to shock yourself is what I call it. So I like to get on the assault bike and do some sprints. Recently, I did a two minute warm up on the assault bike and then I would do sprints. So I'd go 20 seconds as hard as I can, 40 seconds rest. So I'm giving myself a good amount of rest, but I'm doing eight, nine, 10 rounds of that. Um, and by that 10th round, you're just really, really dead. That sprint feels like really difficult to sort of, sort of a shock my system and like get back into good cardio mode. So that's sort of what I would do there. Brendan, I live in a house with roommates and they use seed oils for cooking all the time. Is it better to use a stainless steel pan or cast iron because everybody's using all the pans uh, together, I'm assuming, and will cast iron absorb seed oils? Yes, cast iron will absorb seed oils a little bit. That's why I did a video showing how you can sort of buy a cast iron pan and re-season it so it has like a beef tallow coating on it. Um, so yeah, stainless steel would be the way to go. Um, if you all are sharing a pan, you can use stainless steel pan. And uh, you don't really want to just be like washing that thing with dish soap. It's like sensitive, just like cast iron. And you can sort of ruin the non-stick aspects of a stainless steel pan. But you should be using a stainless steel pan in that situation. Brendan, I'm a 17 year old and I'm on a bulk. I can't eat meat for every single meal. What are some good sources to get calories from that aren't, you know, wheat, gluten, just like bad foods that disturb his gut? I'm assuming that he doesn't want to eat. Yeah, totally. So first thing is going to be loaded protein shakes. So when you look at a protein shake, like our grass fed grass finish way, you're going to be at about $1.50 to $1.90 per scoop on that. Okay, so two scoops, that's going to give you 40 grams of protein. And like think of what 40 grams of protein with meat would actually cost it would be way more money. So doing these loaded protein shakes with egg yolks, um, and fruit in there and even adding in some honey or maple syrup if you're bulking is totally fine You are going to be able to pack in a good amount of calories from that Especially with the egg yolks if you do three egg yolks some real whole milk like real dairy two scoops of protein a big amount of fruit in there and blend that up one it's delicious and you can just sort of sip on it for you know an hour so you don't have to like really stress your digestive system with trying to like crank that in like take your time drinking that thing and that is an amazing way to add calories other good source of calories are rice with some fat on top so rice uh, with some coconut oil or some butter butter obviously and like other fats are going to be nine calories per gram so they're going to be very very good options for bulking um, but protein powder is going to be your friend there in terms of getting your protein in without eating meat. Uh, eggs are another really good source. So we have a buddy, Todd Duffy, and Todd is huge. He is six foot four. I, I think he's weighed as much as like 240 pounds before. Uh, he's huge. And he will commonly eat these like big things if it's like a huge thing of rice avocado and eggs and it's probably like six or eight or nine eggs in there dude like it's a lot uh, but he just eats that and like it's helped him stay huge when he needs to be huge he's probably leaner right now um but yeah that's some good ideas right there put olive oil on stuff you'll be able to bulk. Brendan, I have really bad seasonal allergies around springtime. How can I fight this? Yeah, so there's a couple things that I would do if I had allergies. One, quercetin. I've talked about quercetin before. I'd be taking about 500 milligrams to a gram of quercetin every single day. Oftentimes, it's packaged with a supplement called bromelain, which is a digestive enzyme from pineapple, and that can also help with some allergies, some histamine symptoms. A lot of these histamine symptoms is what you're going after if you have allergies, right? So bromelain, adding in quercetin, bromelain, and acetylcysteine. I'd be taking 
about 600 milligrams to 1200 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine. I'd actually take that every single day uh, just because it helps your liver, helps your lungs, helps some of your respiratory health there. The other thing that has some cool studies on it is local raw honey. You can buy this at any health food store. Just get some local honey or a farmer's market, something like that, and that can potentially help with allergies um, those are going to be sort of the three main things you want to look at. Other things like eating a uh, good fermented food like yogurt can help because your gut microbiome has to do with your histamine tolerance and a lot of things are at play there with your gut microbiome. So getting some of those foods that have active probiotics in there can definitely help. And then the other thing is to look into foods that don't, uh, that aren't high histamine. You can just Google high histamine foods. Maybe we'll have it pop up right here when you just Google high histamine foods. You can see some of them. Um, so even like avocados and bananas are known to be sort of high histamine. You shouldn't worry about those foods if you're not having some unique issue. Uh, but yeah, you should probably avoid some of those foods, add in some of those supplements, and see how you feel. Brennan, is citric acid bad? I saw a video saying it's made from black mold and like the scary video. Um, is citric acid bad? So as you guys know, I'm definitely like a health nerd. I avoid so many different types of foods. I've been called a um, fear monger because all the ingredients I avoid. So why do I, do I not avoid citric acid? One, citric acid is not derived from black mold. I, I don't know. We can have it pop up right here. Aspergillus, which is used in the manufacturing process of citric acid, and citric acid is from citrus fruits, okay? It is in lemons, limes, that is where citric acid comes from. And to extract it, they use something called aspergillus. Aspergillus is not black mold. I don't know how else to like explain this. It is not black mold, so it's not used in you know the citric acid uh, process. Somehow that, that people made videos that it is, it's not. It's literally a completely different uh, fungus and mold species that is black mold, so it's just not. Aspergillus is used in the manufacturing of cheese, of other fermented products, of wine, of a lot of those um, like um, functional mushroom supplements that you'll buy, cordyceps, lion's mane, are grown on different types of fungus. Then, in the citric acid manufacturing, uh, how they manufacture it, the mold is removed, completely removed. So much so that citric acid tests mold free. So if you send it to a lab and test it for mold, uh, Redmond has done this. They're another company that uses citric acid and they have done this with their citric acid. They test it for mold and obviously it comes back mold free. Um, so, you know, it's just like a cordyceps mushroom, if you heard of that, or lion's mane. They grow it on um, basically mold, I mean a fungus. But then they take off the fruiting bodies of that lion's mane and that's what you take if you take a lion's mane supplement or anything like that. Um, you know, so that's how it works. Kombucha is grown with a scoby, for example, and that is fungus. Okay. So you shouldn't worry about that. Um, now there is a paper showing that it's like a case report on a few people that have reactions to citric acid. And I pulled that paper up in a post I did recently. Those people that had reactions had severe other issues. Like you can see it in the case report. It's like case two. A woman came in who already has asthma and autoimmune issues and, you know, uh, all these issues, and she reacts with citric acid in a negative way. So what I would suggest is if you are somebody who eats, you know, oranges, lemons, limes, and you have a reaction to that, I'm not like, you know, then yeah, you might want to stay away from citric acid. If you're somebody who can drink, you know, orange juice or eat some citrus fruit and you feel totally fine, you'll probably be just fine with citric acid. It's a very small amount we use, and our label will be updated soon because we use non-GMO citric acid. So the label will now say non-GMO citric acid. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're worried about it and you don't feel good consuming it, just like anything, don't consume it. But I personally consume it, and that is why. Brennan, I made a DIY cream with honey in it as one of the ingredients, and it came out sticky when like they put it on their skin. How will you avoid that in your new product, the honey beef tallow beeswax? So beeswax definitely helps with that. That's what we found. When you just mix honey and tallow, yeah, it can have a little bit of a stickier texture, but if you just use a little bit of honey and then you use tallow and beeswax, it can create a really nice balm. Um, there's some machines that we use for helping emulsify and mix that product that you probably just wouldn't have access to at home unless you have giant stainless steel manufacturing equipment at home, but you probably don't. Um, so yeah, that's like the big reason there. Um, I'll definitely do a video showing like how you could make this at home. I don't know if, if that product would turn out as good, but I always like to be transparent. Like with the electrolytes a while ago, I did a video like, hey, you could buy you know, sea salt, and then you could buy Himalayan salt, and then you could buy, you know what I mean, some natural flavor, and then you could buy some stevia, and you could buy magnesium, and you could buy potassium, and you could make our electrolytes. 
The thing is, I think it came out and like you saved like 50 cents or something. Most people would just be like, dude, I'll just buy it. So I'll try to do that with the honey tallow, but I know what you're saying. Um, you need big emulsification machines and that beeswax also helps. Beeswax is such a good skin ingredient, completely non-comedogenic. Um, I love it. So it's in our chapstick too. But yeah, stoked on that. Brennan, are there any supplements you would suggest besides just protein and creatine for muscle growth? Yes, absolutely, there are some. So one I would recommend is Alpha GPC before training. About 200 to 300 milligrams. If you want to do more, you can do as much as 600 milligrams of Alpha GPC uh, before training. This is going to increase your musculoskeletal endurance and your force output. So you're going to be able to add more reps essentially while you're working out, and that is going to help you gain muscle. The other most researched supplement out there is L-citrulline. You can take something like our natural pre-workout that has six grams of L-citrulline per scoop, but you can also just buy L-citrulline if you just want to start to experiment around with single ingredients. I, you know, Take five, six grams of L-citrulline before your workout. It's going to give you better blood flow. Now, a lot of people think that this is just because of the pump. Oh, the pump is great. What the pump is actually doing is shuttling more nutrients into your muscles. You are actually able to lift more weight and have more endurance when you have a good pump. In the context of hypertrophy training, this is where the gains actually happen. So taking a good pump product before a workout doesn't just give you a good pump. It literally helps you build more muscle. So that's very key. Protein and creatine, obviously, you need that. Um, acetyl L-carnitine is also in our pre-workout. That's another good one. Some cool research on that. Um... Yeah, uh, beef liver definitely has been just like something that doesn't have a ton of research on it, but it always just gives me tons more energy. Um, and I just feel great when I'm supplementing with beef liver. So that's another one you might want to throw into the mix, but I don't have any hard data on that. Like, like there is with citrulline, alpha GPC, acetyl L carnitine, um, stuff like that. So try those out, get those gains. Brendan, what are your thoughts on college, university, all this stuff? Should I go to college? I think this is something a lot of, you know, 18, 17 year olds are dealing with. Um, so after high school, I went to a college in the East Bay of California for one year and I dropped out. That's where I met my videographer. That's where I met the co-founder of my company, Joe. You might've seen him appear in some videos. Um, and I went to that college for a year and it was cool, but I just wasn't feeling it. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't want to get a degree there and just start working in a few years. So um, I dropped out of there and I spent a year basically traveling. I lived in Hawaii with my cousin for a little bit. She's lived out there for a long time, started surfing more out there. And then I lived in Costa Rica for a little bit, just traveling around, bro, just like a hippie surf nomad, really. Like, you know, it was honestly one of the best things that I did. So from that, what I really recommend for people is to take a gap year. Now, I remember being 18 and there's this huge pressure to go to college from your peers, from your teachers, from everybody, you know, your parents, everybody's like, you have to go to college, you have to go to college. However, I feel less and less confident about college for young people. And the reason is the price has gone up astronomically. People are taking on insane amounts of debt to go to college. And then they are graduating and that degree is not serving them how they thought it would. The job market is very tough. I just talked to a guy yesterday who got a degree in science from Stanford. He can't find a job right now. Okay. Like it's, t he's tutoring kids and you know, that's not a bad thing. That's great. But he was just like, dude, like I did not expect this. And then we all know the classic meme of the person who spent 200 grand on some liberal arts degree and is now working as a barista at Starbucks. That said college, I ended up transferring to UC Santa Cruz and I uh, got my degree there. I think if you don't have to go into massive debt to go to college, you can find out a way to, you know, either work while you're in school and pay off some of that debt or, you know, your grandma's going to chip in 20 grand to your college tuition, whatever it is, then you should maybe go to college. There is tremendous networking that can happen there. There is a lot of stuff you can learn, especially if you go into something specific that you're passionate about. But man, it's just not what it once was. You are not going to go get a degree and that's not going to guarantee you shit. You have to be somebody who's personable. You have to be able to work and get work experience. You're really going to have to grind it out. The world's competitive right now, and a degree doesn't mean what it used to. Brennan, I know you're not like Paul Saladino, and you eat vegetables, so you're not the plant defense chemical guy. What vegetables do you eat? So yeah, Paul Saladino makes some interesting points about plant defense chemicals where 
They are real. You can see studies where people start to eat a lot of raw greens and they get kidney stones and all types of issues. That's a real thing, okay? So um, there's not complete BS to that. Um, nuts have phytic acid. If you eat tons and tons of nuts, you can get issues with phytic acid. So what vegetables do I eat? I prefer properly prepared vegetables and I prefer to eat them in the context of a recipe. So yeah, my diet, unlike a lot of the healthy diets out there, is not something where I'm like, how do I get in as many vegetables and greens as I can during the day? But I do get some in and here's what I like. I love carrots. Carrots are amazing. I use them in the beef stew. I also put celery and onion in there. Um, that's something I eat commonly. Zucchini. Zucchini is amazing and it's just so easy to make. You just chop it up, a little olive oil, a little garlic, maybe a little butter, a little lemon. Whew. Zucchini is amazing, easy to make. Bok choy is another green that I like and it's very underrated. You take bok choy, you chop it up, you throw it in maybe some beef when it's almost done cooking and it's very easy to make. If you're doing a more Asian style recipe like some of my stir fries that I do, I use bok choy. Broccoli I think is decent. I'll throw it in a stir fry sometimes, but I'm not like oftentimes buying broccoli. Uh, different herbs, different like chives. I just put on like a uh, scrambled egg, some chives just adds that beautiful flavor, that beautiful pop to it. So yeah, I would say some of my main ones are, you know, carrots, zucchini, bok choy. I'll do lettuce when I do like a lettuce wrap, you know, burger or like a Caesar salad and throw some steak over that. Um, and yeah, I definitely eat potatoes too, which obviously aren't a vegetable. They're a tuber, but sweet potatoes, um, red potatoes, whatever. So yeah, those are some of the vegetables that I eat. If you properly prepare them, plant defense chemicals are not a big issue unless you have some other gut issues or autoimmune issues going on. So don't be scared of vegetables. You don't have to go crazy with them, but don't be scared. All right, guys, that is it for this week's AMA. A lot of people ask me like where to get these shirts and stuff. You just gotta know me. I mean, really, that's like where it's at. But, you know, I'll do more merch. I'm trying to get some organic cotton sweatpants made from this small company in San Diego that does organic cotton merch. And then I do have the grass-fed, grass-finished shirts out right now on Organic Jaguar, and they do have our logo on the back. So those are cool. Use the code Santa Cruz if you want to get anything from Organic Jaguar, like the organic cotton boxers that I'm always wearing, Organic Jaguar boxers. Um, so yeah, we do have some like merch like that, but I'm never gonna be a merch company, guys, because this isn't um, what I'm doing is not a money grab. I'm, I'm yeah, I can make money selling merch. I can I can make money selling these shirts. I can make money selling anti red forty shirts, and I might do some small batches of stuff. But unless I can do something really unique, like organic cotton or wool, remember Joe was saying wool, like, do you guys want wool clothing? It's like animal based clothing for real. Like it's literally from animal fur. Um, so there's some like interesting ideas I have with that, but I'm not in some rush to sell t-shirts um, to make money, but uh, we'll see what we can do there. I appreciate you guys so much. Love y'all. Got a busy month ahead of me with this San Diego thing. So let me know if you want to link up, surf down there, do the damn thing. Appreciate you guys. Love you. Peace.